Three towns, one common creative vision. I'm Jackie Ferris. This week on the 302, we are at the Arden Craft Shop Museum, checking out all of the artifacts and learning about this really cool town. Get ready for a deep dive into history. The 302 is headed your way. Welcome to the Arden Craft Shop, where one of the Ardens is celebrating a 100th anniversary. I'm joined now by one of the board of directors for the Arden Craft Shop, Barbara Macklem. Barbara, thank you so much for joining us. You are welcome hither. So let's talk a little bit about the Ardens. There are three towns that make up the Ardens, is that right? That's quite correct. Arden, founded in 1900, Arden Town, as you just mentioned, we're celebrating their centennial. They were founded in 1922. And then last but certainly not least is Arden Croft, founded in 1950. So these um, three um, communities came together um, under two principles that are really key. Two, and then we can possibly add in a third. A third, oh, that's nice, what a treat. Why not? Um, Primarily, we were founded by Frank Stevens, who was a sculptor working out of Philadelphia, and William Lightfoot Price, who was an architect also from Philadelphia. Those two men became proponents, advocates, of an economic theory proposed by Henry George. Henry George was a 19th century economist, and he was very conscious of problems that had been caused in the economy of the United States in the late 19th century by land speculation. And he felt very strongly that progress did not have to lead to poverty. And that's what he saw was happening. So he proposed a theory, which is called the land value tax. And in this, under this theory, all the land in the community is owned by the community itself. And each year that the leaseholds, as they're called, are rented out to whoever wants them, whoever signs the lease. So, in fact, I, I live in Arden, I own my house, but I do not own the land on which the house sits. So it becomes a very curious thing for people outside the Ardens to try to understand. But each year the trustees send me a land rent bill, and I pay them, which I have to do at the end of this month, and out of the land rent that is collected from all of the leaseholders, the trustees pay all of the taxes and also provide a significant amount of money for community activities within the village. Now, I know that there are a lot of people who really would like to have some tax relief. So back in the day, whenever this was uh, created, right. um, was this something innovative? Did other communities look to Arden to, to you know, see how it worked? That is essentially how we were founded here in Delaware. Uh, Stevens and Price were, as I say, advocates of, of the Georges theory. Um, they decided that they would not be able to put that forward for the whole of Pennsylvania. So they said, where could we plan this? Where could we make this actually happen? They said, ah, Delaware, small state. We could go down to Delaware, convince them how accurate or how, what a good thing this would be for their t community. So they came here in, in 1895 in advance of the 1896 elections. They campaigned, they had speeches, they got thrown out of towns, they were jailed on occasion. Wow. And at the end of the election, they put forward a, a, a group of candidates. At the end of the process, they garnered 3% of the vote not quite enough to take over the state legislature. So they thought, let's do this instead. Let's form it, let's find land, let's create a village based on Georgia's principles, and then everyone will see how well it works. And we'll be able to move forward with our campaign to take this nationwide. Now, in addition to the single tax um, mm -hmm. structure, 
it was also, the, the three towns were also focused on creatives. Absolutely. If you're founded by an architect and a sculptor, you have to think that their community of friends and acquaintances are very much within the artistic vein. Um, so we have a full range of the arts here in the Ardens, which continues to this day, which is very exciting. So you have all of your pictorial artists, painters, sculptors, all of that. You have all the performing arts, theater, music, dance. You have a significant number of craftspeople who were who came into the village early on and are still here. And that that is a very special kind of community in which to live. I can imagine. What must it have been like to live in a community where everyone was an artist uh, of some kind? Uh, the early days in Arden, it was primarily a summer colony. So people, to escape the heat of Philadelphia and, and even Wilmington, would come out here, they would have their leasehold, and they would put up a small house for their family. Now, bear in mind, many of these houses were not built by contractors. So if you have a house built by an artist, you have to realize they were fairly modest to begin with. Um, bungalows, sheds, even the open air tents that you, wow. you see. Um, eventually, the village moved along and became a year-round residency. But it was, um, and that's of course early, we're talking early 20th century, so we don't have TVs, we don't have movie, well, movie theaters, but not in Arden. So people made their own enjoyment, their own fun, their own activities. Uh, Shakespeare plays every weekend. So if you weren't in the audience, you were in the cast which is always a great deal of fun to go to a play like that. Uh, concerts on a regular basis. Uh, people who were members of the Philadelphia Orchestra came to, to visit their friends and brought their instruments and played. There would be campfires in the woods. Um, a very active community, absolutely. So you mentioned that a lot of it still exists today. Mm -hmm. um, so are there a bunch of galleries and studios and music halls here? Um, no galleries at this point, unless you count the Art and Craft Shop Museum, okay. which is exciting to do. Um, but there are still a number of studios, in-home studios, a uh, number of craftspeople. There's a new initiative in town, which has just begun within the last year, called the Arden Artisans Collective. It's made up of about 60 people who represent a wide range of the arts and crafts and they have formed a group, they have a website now, uh, and they are putting together gallery shows, which is exciting to see. So just to kind of reiterate that the reason why this place is called the Arden uh, Craft Shop, Muse Shop Museum right. is because there were so many craftsmen and women from all over um, yes in this one concentrated area. This building was uh, original to the farm when Stevens bought the farm. Uh, and it held the craft shop. It actually was the craft shop for many, many years. Um, the Arden Forge operated here. In fact, one of the spaces in the building, uh, there is still the giant fireplace that the Forge used. Um, Don Stevens, who was Frank Stevens' son, had his woodworking business here. Mm -hmm. And there were studios in the building really up through the 60s. That's fascinating. It's, it's a terrific place to live. It now, really is. There are so many artifacts here that we're going to talk about when we return. I'm Alexandra Deutsch, Director of Collections at Winterthur, and I love the arts on the 302. Welcome back. We are visiting the Arden Craft Shop Museum. I'm speaking with Barbara Macklem. Now, Barbara, let's talk a little bit about when people come to the museum. There are so many artifacts that tell the story of the three Ardens. Talk to me a little bit about just all the things you have in here. One of the things that is very special about our community is that very early on in our existence, people started collecting things that were related to the history of the community. And that's rather exciting to think that even in the 20s, people were looking 
uh, for items and wanted to save things. The Craft Shop Museum really started, I guess, with the Archives Committee in the 1960s when it was a more organized effort. A group of people we call our founding mothers were the first Archives Committee. Um, they had exhibitions, they made collections, um, they even had an inventory done, mm -hmm. which was terrific. By the time our centennial rolled around in 2000, there was a real push to have a permanent place for these for the archives that were collected. Um, a 501c3 corporation was formed, um, this building was found, and the museum opened in 2004. What is very special about the, our collection is that it reflects not just Arden, but the three, all three Ardens. So it is one of the many places in which the three Ardens cooperate and come together. So we have everything from Shakespeare costumes from the 60s. We have uh, leasehold documents from the 20s. We have pottery that was done here, weaving from the weave shop sculptor. Um, just about anything that you can imagine we have found a place for in our museum. It looks like you're really telling the story well, but I want to start with when you come in, one of the first things that you see um, is the leaseholder's book. Under yes. glass, you can tell it's very old. A lot of fingers have leafed through its pages. Absolutely. Talk to me a little bit about the significance of this book. The leasehold book came to us from the trustees of Arden Town. We had it on exhibit for a special exhibition several years ago, and um, it never made its way back to the trustees. And finally, we said we need to we need to formalize our relationship with this book, as any museum needs to do with its collection. And the trustees said that we're welcome. You're welcome to have the book. We'd like to have a digitized copy of it. So last summer, we were able to find uh, someone who was able to come in and digitize it for us. So it's now searchable. What the leasehold book is, is a copy, it's not the copy, it's the original of all of the leases that were issued in Ardentown from 1922 to sometime, I think, in the late 40s. So you really get an idea of who was here. Absolutely. And where they were. And That's one, amazing. One of the uh, interesting things that I find about the leasehold book is that the leases themselves were written on good quality, 100% rag paper which is terrific for preservation. However, they were pasted into a scrapbook kind of volume. So the pages on which they're pasted are disintegrating, but the leaseholds themselves are holding on. That's cool. which I think, Which I think speaks to something of the spirit of the community. The pages are disintegrating, but the leases are still with us. And also, you know, they say, you know, if it's made well, it'll last forever. So kind and of like Arden. In the early days, the leaseholds, if a new leaseholder came in, a new lease was not written. You simply took the over the old lease mm -hmm. and extended it. That's no longer the case. The lawyers got involved at some point and said, no, no, we have to have a new lease for everyone. So, sure. But it's a 99-year lease, mm -hmm. and it is renewable. Absolutely. So if you're still <laughs> holding it after 99 years, it can be renewed by the trustees. That's fantastic. Now, I wanted to ask you about a couple of sculptures that you have yes. um, in the museum. The first being a gentleman playing, it looks like the cello. Mm -hmm. The cello player is William Lightfoot Price, one of our founders, and the sculptor is G. Frank Stevens, mm -hmm. our other founder. Uh, and I think it speaks to the connection between the two men and how close they were in spirit, uh, although fairly different in personality. And also, you can see Price's interest in music, which you would not necessarily expect from an architect. Mm -hmm. uh, you also see Stephen's skill, because not only is it a beautifully rendered piece of sculpture, if you look at the chair on which Price is sitting, it is very definitely an arts and crafts chair and it mirrors some of the chairs in our collection, which were made here when this building was an active craft shop. And something that I'm sure that you guys really cherish. Absolutely. And when we return, we'll be talking about more of the items here at the Arden Craft Shop Museum. We'll be right back.
I'm Carol Everhart, and I'm President and CEO of the Rehoboth Beach Dewey Beach Chamber of Commerce, and the beaches are the best on 302. Welcome back. We're talking about all the really cool things that you can find at the Arden Craft Shop Museum. I'm joined with by Barbara. Barbara, I want to ask you about this gentleman who's been eavesdropping on our conversation the whole time. Uh, the gentleman behind us is Mr. Henry George, who was the creator of the uh, economic philosophy on which the Ardens have been based, the concept of land value tax. He was an incredibly well-known economist in 19th century America. He ran for the mayor of New York City several times. Really? Uh, very well-known. Uh, in fact, it's said that his funeral uh, rivaled the attendance, the attendance of his funeral rivaled that of Lincoln's. Really? So it was incredibly well-known and very popular, yes. It certainly is an attractive bust. It was done by one of his sons. Okay. So I guess the artistry carries throughout the generations here. I think it does. And I think you can also look at artistry not only in the tangible, mm -hmm. but the artistry of someone's creative thinking. Sure. And looking for a different way to do things and a promise of a better life for a community. Absolutely. So I'm right over your shoulder over here, we have a beautiful stained glass window, or it's like one, it looks like it might have been of a series. It is a pair of stained glass windows. They were originally hanging in a house called the Monastery. That's one of the fun things about Arden is that almost everyone has a name for their house. Really? And these were done hanging in the Monastery. They were created by Elena Darling, who was a sculptor, uh, of rather a stained glass window maker here who lived in the village. And we have a very lovely portrait bust of her that was done by Frank Stevens. It really is beautiful. They're I mean, quite lovely. What, uh, do you know how old they are? Uh, I would say they were probably done sometime in the 20s. They're really beautiful. That green is really eye-catching. It now, is lovely, isn't does it? That, was that home um, raised? Uh, I th or was it that, that they were remodeling and they just donated it? Has, it? it has been remodeled several different times. Although if you travel around the village, we have a walking tour mm -hmm. of, that you can purchase here. And all of the old buildings are noted on the walking tour. And so you can see that many, unfortunately, because of their not particularly good construction, mm -hmm. had to be raised. Yeah. But there are still... Um, Stain, there is still stained glass in many of the window in many of the houses. Um, there are carvings over doorways and over windows, um, beautiful ceramic tiles mm -hmm. used as decorations. I would imagine so because in a community of craftsmen, your, their homes are going to reflect their minds and their passions. Absolutely, absolutely. Now there are a series of paintings that you yes. also feature here. Tell me about those. I think the pictorial artists are perhaps the most well-known, and we have a number of paintings. Um, we have several by a man who has the marvelous name of Buzz Ware. Mm -hmm. He was is actually Hamilton Disbro Ware. Uh, he was an uh, arts and crafts um, proponent, mm -hmm. and his work is very clearly um, of that genre. We have several pieces that, whose artists we know the artists lived here in town, uh, and they reflect everything from a beautiful landscape or a still life. We have a fantasy, um, which is rather fun, of snowmen frolicking, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, the, the snowmen painting used to hang in the Arden School. So there are former pupils from the Arden School who come in and just have to stand in front of the snowmen with, with great joy because it takes them back to their school days. Absolutely. Now you talk about a lot of the um, the artists that were here during the founding of the Three Ardens, mm -hmm. but what about your modern day artists? Who are the artists who stand out in your community today? It's hard to think of where to start. There's so many. Uh, there are so many. That's great though. Which is absolutely terrific. Um, each year at the Arden Fair, there is an art exhibition and the one last year had um, three women who work in textiles okay and who uh, not only create textiles but also print on them and uh, create patterns out of them and that's not a 
form of art that you find every day, but it was an absolutely beautiful exhibition. Yeah. Do you find that's your favorite? I mean, not that you can really pick favorites, I'm right? I'm really not sure I, I can pick I don't want to put you a, on the spot. I'm really not sure I can pick a favorite. We have some superb uh, potters. Mm -hmm. uh, we are starting again here in the museum an afternoon with the artist program. Oh, nice. And so it's only it's getting a small start. We had to close during COVID, as, as everyone did. Um, but this is a program where we're going to have the our community room available to a local artist who co to come in, show their work for an afternoon, invite their friends and family, and we'll invite the community. And it's just a small little gallery show. But still, you know, a lot of people love small gallery shows because they're intimate and you can get to meet the artist and you really get to dig down deep because you take something home, your people, your friends come over, you want to be able to tell them the history behind the thing, how you got it, how and, it was made, you know, if there's anything special. So not only can you tell them how you got it, you can tell them what the artist told you about it. Absolutely. And that's a very special thing to have in your home. So we're going to have people in 302 land, our viewers, they're going yes. to want to know how they can come and visit you. Because we are almost an all-volunteer organization, our opening times are fairly limited. Mm -hmm. We're open Sunday afternoons from 1 to 3, mm -hmm. and Wednesday evenings from 7.30 to 9. Excellent. And now if that doesn't work, quite for people or if someone is interested perhaps in bringing a group they can always send us an email and the email being the email is ardencraftshopmuseum at gmail.com excellent you guys are on facebook we are so uh, we can keep posted if there's anything special happening yes absolutely um we do also our curator puts up two vintage photographs a week Oh, that's nice. And that's fun um, to have people look at those and either it sparks a memory or it uh, creates a comment and it's just fun to see. Well, this has been fun to do. Thank you so much for spending time with us and sharing a bit of your history. We're very glad to have you visit. You're, as we say in the Ardens, you are welcome hither. Thank you so much. We'll be right back. Are you enjoying the show? Well, if you visit the Arden Craft Shop Museum, make sure you snap a couple of pictures and tag the 302 on Facebook. Now, here are some other things you might want to check out. information on any of the cool items here, you can go to ardencraftshopmuseum.com. That'll do it for this week's episode of The 302. Make sure you follow us on Facebook for some extra content you're really going to enjoy. We're going to leave you now with a beauty shot of the Brandywine River. Until next time, I'm Jackie Ferris. Tell them you saw it on The 302.